Hello YouTube. Today we are not working on my car. I actually bought a valve body salvage. It was broken and it was replaced, but I think we're going to fix it today. This video is for anyone that has the TR690 CVT from Subaru. On this model, the valve body failed and it was replaced per Subaru recommendations. However, the only bad part on the valve body was the solenoid for the torque converter. Now, Subaru doesn't sell that solenoid, but you can go to the manufacturer that Subaru bought it from and buy it from them. I'll have the link in the description for anyone that wants to do it. It's a very easy thing to do, especially if we're talking about someone that's already changed a valve body or is planning to change a valve body in a car. If you're able to do that, you are definitely able and capable of changing out this solenoid as well. So if you're changing this out yourself, if you're, if you're comfortable doing that, you can change out this solenoid. Now when you change the valve body, you do have to drop the oil pan, at least on the TR690, the one we're working on. I'll put a link here, there's already a good video on changing that valve body out. Uh, Mr. Subaru did a fantastic job. However, he chose not to replace the solenoid because again, He's the trained technician and doing things the proper way. Doing this will save you serious money. So the valve body is about an $800 part, depending on where you're buying it. The solenoid that failed is about a $150 part. You can probably find it less for salvage. So it's definitely something, if you're comfortable changing out that valve body, I'd say you're definitely comfortable changing out the solenoid. So if you're a person wanting to maintain their vehicle for cheap and doesn't want to replace an $8,000 transmission, doesn't want to pay $1,000 for a valve body, you can do it for a hundred bucks, a couple hundred at the most. So let's get started. All you'll need for this procedure to start out with, you'll need the valve body, so you will have to drop the pan, the car will be disabled. You'll need fluid when you put the, the valve body and the pan back in. And you'll need, in addition to everything for the drop in the valve body, you'll need a 10 millimeter and a multimeter. That's it, that's all you need. Now you don't even need a nice multimeter. I don't even know where I got this one, but this one's pretty nice. But you can get away with a five or $10 Harbor Freight model, or I think they used to give them away with a coupon if you bought a flashlight, one of those. I mean, you can get away with it's cheap because all you need is a multimeter capable of reading resistance, which would be an ohms. So, let's get started. Let's go ahead. These are all 10 millimeters. Uh, there's also one here. Yeah, you can just bend that tab up. So... Let's do that. There are a lot of tiny little pieces. That's why I actually started recording everything, if I'm honest. Uh, I started taking pictures as I took things apart, and then I started uploading them online as I took them apart. And that just sort of snowballed from there. But the code on this was for the torque converter. I think the lockup was high. I'll put the code up, and I'll make sure to say it in the beginning here. This one. I need a uh, 
tiny little screwdriver. Now this connector looks like um, hmm, interesting. Yeah, pull it up like that. Seems like a lot. There's that. And we can pry that the rest of the way off. I believe this is just a cover, it's not actually a connector. So we now have, this is the green and gray wire, which if you remember that schematic said this was the torque converter solenoid, the connector came right out. So let's do some measuring on it. You don't need an expensive multimeter like this. You can get a five or $10 one from Harbor Freight or anywhere. All you need is to have, be able to read the resistance Resistance is typically measured in ohms, which is shown here. Uh, and it looks like I've already got it to the right setting. So, you know, the, the numbers there correlate like 2 million ohms, 2 mega ohms, excuse me, uh, 2k ohms, kilo ohms. So, we are looking for, I believe this should be 12. And... We are showing it as, eh, let's call that 21 and a half, 21.2. That seems fairly out of spec. So I want to assume that it's uh, correct. And therefore, I'm going to assume that this solenoid is the problem. While you have it out and the whole thing's disassembled, now would be a great time to check the rest. Because now is the time to replace it. Uh, these three solenoids, the one we have out and the two next to it, are all interchangeable. So actually, you could just go... Ooh, that's a doozy. If you know of a salvage yard that has one of these sitting in a field, you could pull this whole valve body out and you'd be probably be able to get two good salvage solenoids. Uh, it might be cheaper than the new part. Or if you know anybody that separates out these valve bodies, these probably still have some value because all three of these are the same. If you do want to test from the bottom, you can. I'll show real quick. Just ground it on itself. Uh, every connector here or every wire here follows to the other side on the... Every wire on this connector loops around to the other side and goes to one of these solenoids so the one that we just replaced is the torque converter solenoid that's the green and the gray wire we can test on this side like this it doesn't matter which way these will go not for resistance and then green and gray it looks like the top left yeah you can see it connector and then we'll just ground it out 14, 13, 14, looks good. What's next? Blue and gray. Blue is the one directly underneath green. 13, 14, looks good. And then we've got purple and gray. Again, the gray is the ground, so. And then the purple wire is right next to the blue one. 13, 14, 13.9, they're all coming in right on, right in that range, right at 14. Then we put it back together. So, I actually recommend it's easiest just to leave this cap on. You don't have to take it off, although if you need to, you can. Leave it on, 
connect these up. I'm not 100% sure if it matters which way these are actually connected since it's a solenoid. But let's be safe. Connect those on. Slide this cover over. In the groove. So it makes a good seal there. Seat it down in there. Seat that. Listen to the dog's bark. And then go ahead and connect all these grounds. The manual said that it's important to make sure that these grounds are seated properly. And the only way I could imagine to do this improperly would have it be not in enough contact. So. I'm going to make sure that uh, this little clamp piece goes on top when I put these back. It shouldn't affect anything, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Is there another ground or is that it? There's a bolt there, although it's kind of buried and hard to see. Can you see it? There's one right there. It's hard to see on camera, but it's there. That one goes there. That one goes there. And that goes there. I always like to get these started by hand so you can feel if they're cross-threading very easily like that one just now there we go it wasn't cross-threaded but it wanted to pinch that wire Make sure you're not binding any of these wires. I'm going to run it down with the gun on a very low setting and then do the rest by hand. idea of how weak that gun is on a low setting. Can you see what I'm doing here? I mean, that's one finger's worth. Which is all I'm going to torque down there. Because I just need to make sure... Oop. these down to hold everything back in place. Nice tight package there. Okay, you're done. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching. If you have a home lift, why are you getting your education from YouTube?